愿耶和华的荣耀存到永远。愿耶和华喜悦他自己所做的。他注视大地，地就震动；他触摸群山，山就冒烟。我一生要向耶和华歌唱。我还在世的时候，我要向我的神歌颂。愿我的梦想蒙他喜悦。我要应耶和华欢喜。愿罪人从世上灭绝，也不再有恶人存在。我的心哪、啊，你要称颂耶和华，你们要赞美耶和华。在我们修刚开始的时候，我相信我们这里有很多人都感觉到担忧，或者是恐惧，因为那时候的未来看起来充满了很多未知数。可是转眼间两个月已经过去了。当我回想起这两个月的时候，虽然有起有跌，可是我们处处都可以看到看到神的恩典。而这些恩典就是一个确据，证明不管在什么情况下，神他都一步一步的带领着我们。
God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. Glory be to God on high. God is light. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Glory be to God on high. God is power. They who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Glory be to God on high. God is love. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called the children of God. By this we know love, that He laid down His life for us. May all the glory. Be to God on high. Rong Yao Song. Rao 升天坐在全能父上帝的右边，将来必从那里降临，审判活人使人。我信圣灵，我信圣而公之教会，我信圣徒相通，我信罪得赦免，我信身体复活，我信永生。Amen。
brothers and sisters, shall we all pray? Our Father in heaven, once again we want to say thank you to you. We have gone through a few difficult months, but during this period, Lord, you have been with us, you have led us, you have blessed us, you have protected us, Lord. We want to say thank you to you today. And though we can't worship physically uh, in the church premise, and neither can we gather together in your name physically to worship you. But Lord, online today, we gather in the name of Jesus Christ, and we believe that, Lord, your spirit is uh, with us, uh, uh, leading us and guiding us in our worship, Lord. Father, Lord, as we come before you once again, we ask for your forgiveness. As we are uh, partaking in this Holy Communion this, uh, this, uh, this Sunday, and Lord, we once again ask that by the blood of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Lord, we ask for your mercy. We know that we are not worthy at all to come before you, but it is by your grace and by your love that our sins are forgiven, Lord. But Father Lord, we bring our petitions to you. You hear our uh, spoken prayers, and you too listen to the prayer uh, we say in silence. And Lord, we thank you that and, uh, you will listen and fulfill our petitions, Lord. And uh, as we come before you to worship you, Lord, we also uh, present our thanksgiving offering to you. May we humbly ask the Lord you accept our offering and we ask the Lord you continue to shower upon us your goodness and your blessing to every brothers and sister who are here worshipping you Lord we thank you for all this and we commit the rest of our worship into your hands may your presence be felt by every worshipper before you Lord thank you in Jesus most wonderful name we pray
上一送。Shalom, dear brothers and sisters. In my previous sharing on this series, on the Sermon on the Mount, I have finished sharing the Lord's Prayer. But let us not forget, we have not done with the whole Sermon on the Mount. And therefore today, let us continue. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 21, Jesus teaches that, do not store up for yourself treasure on earth where moons and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasure in heaven where moons and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. What were the treasure then? In Genesis chapter 45, verses 22 to 24, when Pharaoh knew it was Joseph's brother who came to buy food stuff, he instructed Joseph to give his siblings new clothing, silver, donkeys, grain, and bread. Also, we learn in Joshua chapter 7, verse 21, Israelites unexpectedly lost the battle in Ai. It was because Achan kept the plunder which contained beautiful rope, silver, and gold bar. We can see the treasure Jesus was talking about are, uh, among other things, expensive clothing, silver, gold, animals, and agricultural produce. Jesus says, Despite their precious value, these treasures could be eaten by small insects like moons, or they may be stolen, or they may get rusty and rendered worthless. The word rust in King James Version is rendered vermin in New International Version. 
a kind of wild rabbit which often destroy their plants. In original Greek language, the word is process, which can mean rust or eating. Whichever word we take, it simply means that the valuable items were destroyable and lossable. Therefore, the owner of these treasures who have to keep their eyes and hearts on them, their treasures, instead of bringing them a sense of security, they became the cause of their worry. Modern people are of little difference from the people of Jesus' days. We, just like them, possess strong desire to gain and possess precious things. We are strongly desirous to own expensive clothing, car, house, jewelry, and handbags. Besides, we have also added some virtual, invisible, intangible wealth, such as share and warrant, derivative financial product, virtual currency, and virtual gold and silver accounts. Similarly, the value of these wealth are destroyable and lossable. The current pandemic could have opened our eyes. Some of these assets we were proudly to have in the past have now become our liabilities because we have lost our normal income to pay our debts to the banks. Hence, overnight, these assets are forced turn into our liabilities. No wonder, even in the normal times, we must work extremely hard to ensure that we have sufficient funds to pay for our loans. Just like what Jesus said, we are already forced to put our hearts on our possessions. Businessmen know this truth. They must keep close watch on their businesses. Any negligence could have caused the loss or even downfall of their business. Jesus was saying it is worthless for us to strive for the whole life to gain and keep things that are destroyable and lossable. When we put our soul and minds to pursue things that are destroyable and lossable, we put our life focus on them. By doing so, not only we end up losing these things, but also something much more valuable, that is the blessing of the kingdom of God. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 22 to 23, Jesus said, The eye is the lamb of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your body, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? When we read these verses, we have a feeling that they do not have any connection with the previous verses. Jesus jumped from the topic on people focusing on their treasure to the topic of health, eye health. But in fact, Jesus did not, deviate, did not deviate from his topic. Why? The pertinent issue is found on the words healthy eyes. Healthy eyes, in Greek original language, is haplos, can mean single or sharply focused on, that is the translation of King James Version, or a healthy eyes, which we found in NIV. In this context, I believe Jesus was saying that the focus of life ought to be on the right things. Jesus was using the health of the eyes to illustrate what he said in the preceding verses. If our life is focused on transcending treasure of this world, we will lose the eternal light of the kingdom of God and our lives is full of darkness. We will pay no attention to the word of God, do no godly deeds, heed no 
to the world, uh, to God's value and culture. If we focus on our, our life correctly on the kingdom of God, our life will be filled with the eternal light of the kingdom of God. Our deeds will be honorable, respectable, and beneficial. Conversely, if we do not have the light of God in our life, we will do things in darkness. We will do many detestable, immoral, and sinful things. Dear brothers and sisters, how then can we discipline ourselves so that we can focus on the things of the kingdom of God? We need to do, do, we need to do two things right. Then the focus of our life will be sharp and flawless correctly on the kingdom of God. One, Jesus teaches us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate this one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Jesus explained the first thing by illustrating it with the devotion of a worker to his master. No worker can serve two masters at the, at the same time. Jesus said, no one can serve God at an, and at the same time to serve the money. In those days, to serve was to devote totally to the extent of giving the life to the master. It is unlike modern days when the workers can do sidelines. If they do not have any conflict with the business of his employers. Jesus was illustrating about our faithfulness to our God by using master-slave relationship of the antiquity. If we want our lives focused to be on the kingdom, the first thing we need to do is to serve God faithfully. We have two gods, brother and sister. Unfortunately, we have the almighty God and in our heart, we have another God that is our assets. Taylor Hudson spent 51 years in China as a missionary. He set up China England Vision, which is now known as OMF. He once said, if I have a thousand pounds, China should have it. If I have a thousand lives, China should have them. Immediately he added, no, no, not China, but Christ. I'm quite sure, brother and sister, God will not send most of us to China or to India to do mission, even though you like to eat nasi biryani. But one thing is certain that God is calling us to serve Him in our workplaces. Do we serve do we focus on serving our God in our workplaces? Or we merely make use of our workplaces to gain more wealth for ourselves? Secondly, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 27, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Looking at the birds of the air, they do not sow or reap or store away in bunks, and yet Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than them? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? The second thing is the worry of life. Jesus said we should not worry about our food, our drink, our clothing, our dwelling place, and our transportation. Our life is more important than anything else. If God feeds the bird in the air, will He not feed all of us? Since ancient days, human long for longevity. But who can add more days to their lives by worrying? 
So why do we need to worry for our life? Jesus continued to say in Matthew chapter 6, verse 28 to 30. And, when, and why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? If God bothers to clothe the flowers and, and the grass in the field to make them beautiful, will he not clothe his own precious children, you and me, brother and sister? Do we have that faith that God will make our life beautiful? In Matthew chapter 6, 31 to 34, Jesus reminds us, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagan is run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Brother and sister, do not worry. Does not mean that we do not need to work hard. Conversely, we need to work hard. However, our hard works are no more just merely to gain the desirable and lossable things, but for God, for the kingdom of God. Let us not to worry for what we eat, to what to wear, where to stay, and what car to drive. God knows these are our needs, and He will provide. On the other hand, we need to seek His kingdom first and His righteousness. The needs of our living, He will then provide sufficiently for us. The pursuit of the kingdom of God includes our declaration that He is the King and the ruler, and to obey His teaching, and to confirm to His culture, values, and morality in the simplest words. We need to read the Bible and do what are instructed by it. Mother Teresa once said, Read your Bible diligently. Go and do accordingly. Your life will be full of meaning. Mother Teresa devoted her whole life to serve the poor in India. She did not possess anything in her life. She even died at the same time with Princess Diana of England. Even the expected publicity of her death was overwhelmed by the news of the death of Princess Diana. On the other hand, the righteousness of God is our reconciled relationship with God. We can make it better day by day by spiritual disciplines of worshipping, Bible reading, prayer, meditation, and solitude. Therefore, let us trust God day by day. Lay them on Him, the chores of our day. Do not worry for the future, for God will provide as it comes along. Brothers and sisters, let us conclude today's lesson. Jesus teaches us not to spend our precious life on the worry, desirable and lossable treasures. Instead, we should spend our life in pursuing the kingdom of God. We need to acknowledge Jesus is a king and he rules in his kingdom. We need to obey his instructions. We need to conform to the culture, law, value system and morality of God, of God in his kingdom. The focus of our lives also must be to pursue the righteousness of God. 
That is to build our reconciled relationship with God and get Him better and better. By doing so, our life will be filled with light, full of peace and joy. We will no longer be under bondage of the evil one. We do not need to live a life full of darkness, sinful behaviors, and craftiness to achieve this regardless who we are. We are workers, businessmen, students, house queens, or politicians. We must focus on serving God. These are the platforms God has sent us to serve Him. Remember, we are serving God in these platforms. Secondly, we must have faith in God to provide for our needs. We learn to trust Him. We continue to work hard, but do not worry for all these things. For God will provide all that is needed for our lives. We must hold on to that faith. Thank you. Dear brothers and sisters, we must thank God we are able to have online worship. Even though temporarily we can't have our physical worship as our church promise. We thank God that we are able to administer this holy sacrament even at our homes. And now let us put our hearts together to remember the love of Jesus Christ through this Holy Communion. Church, ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in His holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and devoutly kneeling, making your humble confession to Almighty God. Let us all say the prayer confession together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and reveal our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most, most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous to, unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may every hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life. To the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take it, and this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remissions of sins. Do this as of, as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Now, the heads of the family, please distribute the bread and the cup that you have prepared to the members of your family who have been baptized. And after distributing, please hold on and wait for a while. We want to, we want the church to 
eat and drink at the same time. Dear brothers and sisters, shall we bow our head and remain silent as we pray? Father Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your grace and for your love that enable us to have this holy sacrament at our homes. Lord, through the taking of bread and drinking of the cup, we remember your love. We remember what you have done for us while you were in the world and the passion and pain that you have gone through on the cross. Lord, we thank you and we ask that you continue to lead us, to keep us in your love so that Lord use us also as your instrument. Thank you, Lord. Now, that may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>